Hey folks, Mrs. White here. Um, today's fourth lesson is going to be section 5-2 in your book. It's kind of a continuation after long division, and you're really going to like it. Uh, it is synthetic division. So make sure you have this handy dandy note taking guide. It's only one side. It's going to cover some of the examples that we're going to talk about today and the steps um, outlined first by your textbook, and then what we'll do is we'll summarize them together. So make sure you have this, and we'll get started. Okay? So to start off, synthetic division is a way that we can divide polynomials, um, specifically a polynomial by a binomial, that's going to be a little bit more simplistic. Maybe I should just say a little bit less work than long division, okay? Because after doing long division a few times, I actually like that algorithm. It feels natural to me because I did so much long division in like third and fourth and fifth grade. Um, that synthetic at first feels weird, but it's much more efficient. Um, you can do it much more fluidly. And as we start doing works with find or work with finding zeros and x-intercepts, which are the same thing of polynomials, uh, we need a way to divide that's going to be quicker than long division. So that's why we're looking at synthetic today, and that's some of our uses that we're going to be applying it for or towards in the future. So in your book, there are four steps. They're pretty darn wordy. We're going to kind of summarize those four together, and as we do so, we're going to do an example. Uh, then I'll have you folks try two examples on your own, pause the video, and I'll go over them afterwards. And then we're going to look at um, when they get a little bit more complicated also. So let's start off by talking about how the heck do we do synthetic division. So the first step, and it is kind of weird, is we're going to write the coefficients of the dividend, so the polynomial that we're going to be dividing, okay, not dividing by, but the one we're actually going to be dividing into, um, the coefficients of them from the highest to the lowest degrees, okay? So I'm going to look here. I see this is a third degree polynomial, so I'm going to write the coefficients in order, the one attached to the third power, second, first, and then the one that doesn't have a variable attached to it. So if I look here, my coefficients are positive 2, negative 13, 26, and 20, excuse me, negative 24. So let's say, like examples we saw with long division, that you're missing perhaps the x squared term, okay? So in that case, we're going to do just like we would in long division. Because we're missing that descending power, we would put a 0 as the coefficient, okay? Just like we used a placeholder of 0 x squared with long division, we would just put a 0 for that coefficient. Again, we have every power that we need, so we don't need to worry about using a 0 as a placeholder, okay? So that's part of the first step here. Um, the second thing is that you need to write the constant r of the divisor, x minus r, in the box. So you're like, one, what is the box? And two, what, what is x minus r? Okay, so if we look at our divisor, and in this one we don't have to, but you'll see in our next example we do, we need to rearrange this so that it looks like x minus r. And then we're going to use this r version, not attached to the negative sign, this r to place in a, in a box, okay, to the side that we're going to use several times throughout synthetic division, okay? So if we look at this, this literally looks exactly like this form, doesn't it? Where r in this instance would be just the 4, not negative 4 again, just the 4. So I'm going to take that 4, I'm going to put it in the box. So what that means is I'm going to put it over here, and I kind of put it um, in half, a half box kind of isolated from my coefficients. That way I can delineate the difference between my r value and all of those numbers. Now that I've done that, there's some more setting up I like to do. I like to put a line below these, not right below. I have to leave some space for some digits. And underneath the constant term, I like to put kind of a little box over there. Because what's going to happen is we're going to get a bunch of constants that are going to be here that are going to magically apply to what the um, quotient would be. And our remainder is going to be the number that would be in this box. So if there's no remainder, once we do all this math, there'll be a zero there. If there is a remainder, we'll have some sort of constant value uh, showcased here. So we've put our co coefficients there. We found our r value. We put it in the box. And now we're going to bring our first coefficient down. So we're going to bring the 2 right down and put it here. All right. So to summarize our first step, we're going to list the coefficients. using zero for fillers, if needed, okay? In addition to that, we're going to find our R value and put it in a box. And bring down your first coefficient. Okay. 
So that's kind of the summary of that whole shebang. So now that we've done that, we're going to go here. We're going to multiply our first coefficient by our r value right here and put the product under our second coefficient. And then we're going to add those. So it's going to look something like this. I'm going to take my 4. I'm going to times it by 2. So 4 times 2 is 8. I write my product here under my next coefficient. And then I'm going to add these together. And I just look at it as combining them. Okay, I have a negative 13 and a positive 8. So together I have negative 5. And I'm going to continue this process until I've gone through all of the numbers. So I'm going to go then, look, 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. 26 and negative 20 together is a positive 6. 4 times 6 is 24. I put my product here. And then I combine these together and I get a 0. Meaning I have no remainder here. These divided nicely. Okay? So to summarize that step, and it's kind of step two and three. I'm going to stick those together because it's pretty quick, right? I'm going to uh, multiply whatever number is resulting in R. And then I'm going to carry it uh, over and repeat. So I'm going to carry that number over under the next coefficient and repeat that process until I'm all done, okay? So then our last step to actually get to our answer, because right now all we have is a bunch of rando numbers, or they feel random, right? We just did some magic math and got these numbers and supposedly we're pretty much done. Well, we are, because what happened here is I found all of the coefficients of the resulting polynomial. And the resulting polynomial, when I do this division, is going to start with the power that is one less than the degree of the dividend. Again, this is our dividend, so I'm going to look here. One power less than that means the highest degree here is going to be 2. It's going to start with an x squared. Then I'm going to go down by one power every single time. Okay, so the first term is 1 less than the degree of the dividend. And this final number over here, like I said earlier, is going to be our remainder. So my answer is 2x squared minus 5. One power less than this is x. This is a positive 6, so I'm going to put plus 6. One power less than this is zero, which means that it's, there's no, um, excuse me, variable there, and there's no remainder. So the solution to this divided by this, okay, this polynomial divided by the binomial is 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. So our last step to kind of summarize that also, and you can kind of put these in your own words if it works better for you that way, is to um, write in the variables. slash remainder. And again, if you need to highlight the fact that it's going to be, the power is going to be uh, one less than the first term in your dividend, then that's fine. Okay. So very quickly, our coefficients are written here. We rearrange this so it looks like x minus r, and we put our r value, which happens to be the opposite sign of what you think it's going to be, right here. You bring down your first coefficient, multiply these, and carry it over, combine like terms, multiply these, carry it over, combine like terms, multiply these, carry it over and continue that until you're finished, plug in your variables in descending order for one power less than your degree of your divide, uh, dividend. So the more you do this, the more efficient you will get at it. So we're going to do a couple more examples that are going to be about the same difficulty as that. Okay, so we're going to use synthetic division to find each quotient. First things first, I'm going to look at all of these, power 3, 2, 1, and none, so I don't need any fillers. So I'm going to start by doing a 2, this is positive 3, negative 4, and 15. I'm going to then look for my r value. Remember, it needs to look like x minus r. So this is not a minus, it's a plus, meaning my r value would have to be negative 3, right? Because neg minus negative 3 would become a plus. So over here, I'm going to stick a negative 3 in the box. I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to put a little box over here for my remainder under my last constant. And now I'm going to go through, drop my first coefficient down, multiply, put it here, combine like terms, and do that all the way through. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. 3 and negative 6 together is negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3, positive 9. Positive 9 and negative 4 together are 5. 
negative 3 and 5 is negative 15. Again, I have no remainder here. So I've completed this whole thing. I look up here at my highest degree. It is a third power, meaning that my um, quotient here is going to have the highest degree of a 2. So this is going to then have an x squared. The next power will be one less than that, x to the first. This is a positive 5, so I put a plus. And there's no x there because it goes 2, 1, and none. There's no remainder, so this is my solution. Now what I want you to do is take a second, pause the video, okay, and try to solve this one. I want to point out to you that it goes 4, 3, 1. So you're going to need a filler, okay? Um, and that our R value is a little bit more obvious than the first one. So pause this real quick. This one is going to have a remainder. So if you're not exactly sure what to do with that, you'll see in a second, okay? So seriously, pause the video, take a second, solve that problem. Welcome back. So let's go over this problem. I'm going to go a little bit quicker than I did in the other ones. Okay, I'm not going to summarize every single step that I'm doing, but you can kind of see the process and check it with your notes. If you have to edit any of the work you did so it's correct, please do so. So I'm going to start off with my coefficients, 6, negative 8. I don't have a b squared, so I'm going to use a 0, followed by 12 and negative 14. My r value here is going to be 2. I'm going to draw my line, put my box for the remainder, drop the 6 down. 2 times 6 is 12, negative 8 and 12 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8, 0 and 8 is 8. 2 times 8 is 16, 12 and 16 is 28. And then 2 times 28 is 56. And 56 minus 14 is going to be, what, 42. So clearly I have a remainder this time. I look up at my original problem. It has a degree of 4, meaning here I'm going to start with a power of 3, and the variable is b. So I'm going to have b to the third. This is a positive 4, so I put plus 4b squared plus 8b minus 28. Now this 42 is positive, so I'm going to add 42, and I'm going to put it over my original divisor. Okay. So b minus 2. So this is very similar at this point right now to the long division we've done. When we do have a remainder, we look at our original divisor and we set that as our denominator. So just to rewrite it so it doesn't look so squishy, 6b to the third plus 4b squared plus 8b minus 28. And then this was a positive remainder, so I put plus 42 over b minus 2. Now, just like with long division, when we have a divisor with a leading coefficient that's 1, it's a lot simpler than if we have a leading coefficient that isn't 1. And so we're going to do that now, okay? So the next piece to tackle is what the heck do we do when our leading coefficient is not 1, all right? And it's going to involve a bit of fractions you're going to see. But I still feel like there's a lot of less rationalizing what number multiplies to be what um, than long division. So this is much more efficient. So use synthetic division to find this divided by this. Now looking here, I have 4, 3, 2, 1. I don't have a constant. I don't have something that's just a number without x. So I'm going to have to put a 0 there as a placeholder. Even if the constant's missing, I need to put a 0 there. And then I come over here to my divisor, and I'm like, crud. It does not have a leading coefficient of 1. So in order for it to look like this, I have to get that number to be 1. So think back to what we've always done in algebra, okay? Think back to even completing the square. We needed our a value to be 1, so what would we do? Divide by a. So here, we want to attach to the x to be 1, so we're going to divide by whatever coefficient's there. Now here's the tricky part that people often make mistakes on, even myself. I'm going to divide everything here by 3. But in order for this situation to be equivalent, I have to do it not just to the divisor, I have to do it to the dividend also. So when I divide this by 3, I'm going to take this whole polynomial and divide that by 3 also. So I can't write down my coefficients first. I need to look here, figure out what my r is, keep in mind that I divided by 3, so everything here for it to be equivalent will also be divided by 3. So I end up with x plus 1 divided by 3 is 1 third. So my r value, okay, is going to be a negative one-third. I'm going to actually throw that right over here right now so I don't forget. Now I'm going to look at my coefficients. 
In order to write those down appropriately, I need to distribute this divide by 3 to each part. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Negative 5 divided by 3 is not a super nice number, so I'm going to leave it as a fraction. This is a coefficient of 1. 1 divided by 3, I'm going to leave as a fraction. 7 divided by 3, not great, going to leave it as a fraction. And there's no constant, so I'm going to use a 0. 0 divided by 3 is still 0. Okay. So right now you're like, great, all these fractions. It's actually this specific example and a couple of the other ones we're going to do are going to work out nicer than you think. Okay. So I'm going to draw my line underneath my constant. I'm going to put my box for my remainder. And now we do the same exact process we were doing before. Okay. I am just dealing with a fraction this time. So negative 1, oops, I forgot to drop my 1 down. Negative 1 third times 1, negative 1 third. Right now, these have a common denominator. It's very easy to combine them. Negative 5 and negative 1 is negative 6, both over 3. That results in negative 2. Negative 1 third times negative 2. Well, a negative and a negative is a positive. 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds. 1 third and 2 thirds combined is 3 thirds, which is 1. That's pretty darn nice, too. Negative 1 third times 1 is negative 1 third. I'm going to combine vertically 7 minus 1. Again, they have common denominators already. It's 6. 6 over 3 is positive 2. Negative 1 third times 2 is going to be a negative 2 thirds. 0 minus 2 thirds is negative 2 thirds. So I have a remainder. And it's a fraction, which means I'm going to have some more work to do. Just like when we had fractional remainders uh, with our other long division problems, we're going to have more work to simplify. But this part is the same as it was before. I'm going to look at my original problem. It was a degree of 4. I'm going to go 1 less, which would be a degree of 3. So I'm going to have 1x to the third minus 2x squared plus 1x plus 2. This is a negative, so this will be minus. And I cannot have 2 thirds. I don't put it over my original right now. I would kind of put it over this piece because I used the 1 third okay, to do that work. But if I do that, I'm going to end up with negative 2 thirds over x plus 1 third. I can't have fractions as part of a fraction. It's not simplified that way. So instead, I would multiply it by its reciprocal. So <clears throat> if these two things are equivalent, okay, because we made them that way, then when I think of the reciprocal of this, all right, I'm going to think of this form of it and then just flip this one, all right? So even though initially our denominator would be this, these two things are equivalent, and this one's already rational, so it's going to be easy to flip. So I'm going to take this negative 2 thirds, I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal of our original divisor, not the original original one, the one that we had to edit to get to our x minus r form. And I'm going to flip this here. And what's going to happen most of the time here is that when you do that, your denominators are going to cross cancel and you're going to be left with this over this as our remainder. So to, to go over just what our answer is specifically, it's going to be x to the third, we don't need the one, minus 2x squared plus x plus 2 minus, so that's negative, right? 2 over 3x plus all the work is the same. If our coefficient is not 1 on our divisor, we're going to divide everything by that coefficient. That way we can get a number that is an x minus r form. Our r at that point could be fractional, and so could our coefficient. But all of the work through there is going to be similar. I know that's kind of funky. There's fractions in it, but not too shabby, really. We're going to do two more examples of this specific type of long division. Okay. And if you'd like to, feel free to pause at any point. I'm just going to run through both examples right now, but I really would encourage you to pause the video at any point in time, try to solve it on your own. That way you're getting feedback on your work. It might not be specifically tailored to you, but you'll know, did I do that right? Am I thinking uh, about the correct algorithm or not? So I'm going to look here. Oh, snap. Coefficient is 5. I'm going to be dividing everything by 5. I notice this is 3, 2, 1, and none, so I'm good to go there. I don't need any fillers. I'm going to look here. 
I'm going to be left with B minus 4 fifths. That's what simplifies here. So my R is going to be positive 4 fifths. I'm going to put that in a box. Now I'm going to list my coefficients after I divide it by 5. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. 8 divided by 5 is going to be a fraction. Negative 21 divided by 5 is also going to be a fraction. And 6 divided by 5, whoo, so many amazing fractions. Draw my line, put my box for my remainder, drop the 3 down. Now I'm ready to start actually doing the synthetic division now that it's set up appropriately. 4 fifths times 3, it's like 3 over 1, right? So 4 times 3 is 12 over 5. I'm going to combine these. So 12 and 8 is 20 fifths. Again, combining these is pretty reasonable because they both have a common denominator. Now 20 fifths, I forgot I should have simplified that, right? 20 over 5 is the same thing as positive 4. 4 fifths times 4, I'm going to do 4 over 1. 4 times 4 is 16 over 5. Negative 21 plus 16 is negative 5 over 5, which is the same thing as negative 1. And then over here, oh, I have to multiply those first. Ne uh, 4 fifths times negative 1 is negative 4 fifths. Okay. 6 fifths minus 4 fifths is 2 fifths. I'm going to have to handle... Uh, that remainder afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to look back up here. I'm dealing with a third degree polynomial. I'm going to lower it by one, so everything here is going to start with a b squared. This is a positive four, so plus four b minus one. This is a positive two halves, or excuse me, two fifths. So I'm going to have to have a plus and then my remainder here. Now again, I'm thinking I want to put this fraction over this, but that leaves me with two fractions. I don't like it. Since this and this are equivalent, and I can multiply any fraction by the reciprocal of the other to divide them, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply this by this reciprocal. 5 over 5b minus 4. The 5s cross cancel. I'm going to be left with 2 over 5b minus 4. Ooh, up there. Sorry if that's hard to read. The solution again is 3b squared plus 4b minus 1 plus 2 over 5b minus 4. All right, let's take a look at this last problem. I am noticing 3, 2, 1, and none. That's good to go. My leading coefficient is 3. Bummer. I'm going to divide everything by 3 first. Here and here. So those are going to cancel. I'm going to be left with c minus 4 thirds which means my R value is going to be the opposite sign. It's going to be a positive 4 thirds in a box. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Negative 17 is going to have to stay over 3. 6 over 3 is 2 also. And then 8 over 3 is going to have to stay a fraction. I'm going to draw my line, my little box for the remainder. Drop down the 2, and then I'm ready to go. 4 thirds times 2 over 1 would be 8 thirds. These have a common denominator, so I'm going to do negative 17, go towards the positive 8, is negative 9, and negative 9 over 3 is going to be negative 3. 4 thirds times negative 3 is going to be negative 12 over 3. Negative 12 over 3 is actually negative 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So 4 thirds times negative 2 is going to be negative 8 over 3. Oh my gosh, yay, those cancel. I'm left with zero. There's no remainder here, okay? So that means this is an actual factor of this polynomial because it divided nicely. My highest power here is 3, so this 2 is going to be followed up with a c squared. So 2c squared minus 3c minus 2, and I'm done. There's no remainder. That was a heck of a lot easier, okay? So this is synthetic division. Again, it can only be when you're dividing by a binomial here, okay, because otherwise we're not going to be able to put it into the x minus r um, form, all right? Please come prepared with any questions. Make sure you have this note-taking guide completed in order for you to get credit for uh, doing the learning you did today. Thank you, folks. See you later.